I'm Jane Rogers, and I'm a novelist and a short story writer, and I also write radio drama. I live in Lancashire. Um, my most recent novel was called The Voyage Home, and that was published by Abacus. And The Voyage Home is a, it's a double story, really. It's two stories into cut, a father and a daughter. The daughter's traveling um, from Nigeria on a ship back to England after her father's funeral, and she brings her father's diaries of working in Nigeria with her. So you get the father's story from the diaries and the daughter's story who um, on, the sh on the ship encounters an asylum seeker and is put into a very dangerous position through her meeting with that man. And I guess that kind of gives you a glimpse of the themes that I'm interested in in my work, um, which are to do with personal responsibility, to do with power, to do with the way that sometimes a very powerful person can suck away the confidence of um, a person who is dependent on them. And I'm interested in looking and exploring, really, the kind of um, the way that that personal um, power relationship is also reflected in a bigger political power relationship, which is to say the relationship of the missionary to the uh, situation that he's working in in Nigeria. So those are the kind of themes I'm interested in. Technically, I'm very interested in use of first-person voice. Um, and uh, when I'm asked who my most influential writer is my favorite writer, it's certainly Dostoevsky, and one of the reasons for that is his extraordinary use of the first person voice, particularly in his short stories. This is a short story called Hitting Trees with Sticks. It was shortlisted for the National Short Story Competition. As I'm walking home from the shops, I pass a young girl hitting a tree. I should say she's about 10 years old. She's using a stout stick possibly a broom handle, and she is methodically and repeatedly whacking the trunk, as if it's a job she has to do. There's a boy who stands and watches her. The tree is Prunus subhitella, flowering cherry, growing in the strip of grass that separates the pavement from the dual carriageway. I know that when I speculate about such things, I am on treacherous ground, but as I look at her, I do have a flicker like the quick opening of a camera shutter, of Henry crouched on the bonnet of the old green Ford, bashing it with a rock. We were at the farm then, so he must have been nine. The flicker is not so much of what he did, because of course I do remember the incident perfectly well, as of my own furious older sister indignation. Watching the girl today, I feel simply puzzled. So many things are puzzling. The only thing that is certain is that I cannot trust myself to get it right.